long nights and early mornings, feeling misunderstood and lonely, constant hard work and self-doubt. This is all part of having the courage to chase your dreams and become successful. Are you going to take the risk? I have, and it's worth it. Don't be afraid to take risk and fail. These are the experiences that will help you grow and evolve into a better version of yourself. Start today, be better tomorrow. Welcome to the JA Guam Podcast. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in the podcast belong solely to the host and guests, and not necessarily to Junior Achievement Guam or its affiliates. Welcome back, JA Guam here in the house. We have Pinky Luhan, our executive director. Um, we have Razmeet Sachdev, and she is the owner of a couple different um, businesses right now. So we'll get into all the things that you do, but um, I'm really excited to have her today just because um, she just had a baby like a week ago and she's over yeah. in Thailand. So this is the wonderful thing about um, some of what we're doing now is that we're all starting to learn that we can go outside our comfort zone and outside of Guam. So here we can have um, Razmi talking about her business here in Guam while she's still in Thailand. And then the other person we have here today is uh, Karen To. And Karen um, was the, the vice president of production last year for Passio Dot, who was sponsored by United Airlines. And he just happened to, he has that nice uh, competition of the year t-shirt on. He can show that off a little bit. So, and I'll let him kind of tell what they won and some of the good stuff that they had last year. So let's go ahead and begin. So Karen, I'm so happy that you're able to join us today because like I said, it was so awesome to uh, take the pictures, give you a couple gifts uh, last week when you were doing the photo shoot. And uh, I know you've been in JA. Now is JA your last year? Uh, so last year was my first year. And you jumped up to the plate as, the, as a VP of marketing. And this year- uh, A VP of production. VP of production last year. So this year, what is your sponsoring company? Um, so this year, I'm a part of Title Guarantee, and I'm the president of our company. Oh, already elected, awesome. Ooh. And you know, the thing is, is Title Guarantee is a new company this year. And yes. what's kind of neat about uh, Title Guarantee is that you have all that experience and have been a past winner. So you kind of have, you know, you have the JA knowledge and they'll have the business knowledge. So I know you guys will have an awesome, awesome team. First year teams are always good. So um, you got all your officers elected. Anybody, how, how much of your company are returning students? Um, so currently we have about five or six people that have done JA in the past. And I think two of which um, were officers in their previous companies. Okay, nice. that is what you need. Now, what, what grade are you in? Your father, Duane, is? Uh, yes, and I'm a junior. So you're a junior, so you still have another year to knock off after you do this Three year. Years. Okay. Now, why did you join JA in the first place? So I wanted to join JA because I like like the background of a business and how it works. And not only just the business side of things, but interacting with people and using or like creating a product that people will like and that they'll enjoy. And it makes me happy to see other people happy using our products and our services. Now, what was your biggest takeaway last year from JA? So probably the top three biggest takeaways were um, learning how to run a business um, and with like the finances, the marketing, because that's a lot of things that not a lot of people see in a business. They just see the, the front, the face, mm -hmm. but actually working behind the scenes was a really um, knowledgeable uh, time in JA. And second would be teamwork, working with other people from different schools all around the island and coming together with one goal and one vision in mind and creating something that we all like. How many people did you start with with your team? 
Okay, so last year we started with about 20 people and we ended with about seven. Okay, so did any of your officers switch out? I was started as a member of the finance committee. Unfortunately, our vice president of production had to step down. So um, our president offered me the vice president of production spot and I took it. Um, so the third would probably be um, working with other people um, in the community. So similar to number two, working with other people in our company, but in this case, it would be working with people outside and in the community and creating jobs around the island, helping the island economy and helping our customers with our products. Um, so outside the company, we mainly interact with people through trade fairs and our marketing, um, mainly through social media and in person. So last year we made um, reusable bamboo utensils and they were wrapped in this, um, it was a local fabric and it was called the Pass It Up Pack. Um, so last year we had, I think it was 1,200% return on investment. So last year, because I not only worked with production um, but I also worked with finance and a little bit of marketing. So I can use all of my knowledge from working around the companies last year to apply it to this year as president. Um, and I can share that information with the other VPs of their respective departments. Okay. Now, uh, have you guys come up with a product yet? Or just uh, so no, no, okay. not yet. Okay. So, you know, I, I hope you watched the interview with Charlie Hermosa who's doing the Guam gift baskets because one of the things he's offered to JA is if you guys come up with a product made on Guam um, he would consider he'll he'll check your product out he'll give you his critique and he'll let you know whether or not he'd um, allow you guys to sell it in his, you know if he would promote your product within his basket so it's kind of going to be a cool thing so let's move into our other guest today, Razmi Sachadiv. I had to introduce you on a stage once before and the question was, you know, who is Razmi? And it was like, it depends on who you ask. So just a little bit of background on you, you know, that I know of is that, you know, if you, you ask your friends and family back home and your peers back home in Thailand, you know, they just say you're a super unmotivated girl who basically loves to sleep and watch TV. And, you know, you came out to Guam about six years ago. And if you ask anybody here on Guam who knows you, you know, they'll say, you know, you know, always trying to do something. You're always dabbling in some kind of business. But um, so moving here seven years ago from Bangkok, um, you received your, ma your bachelor's degree in marketing from Mel in Melbourne, Australia. And that's when you discovered the passion of marketing and business, period. Um, and then you didn't really know what you wanted to do, but you've done a bunch in the last year. So, you know, you just had a baby last week and that's why you're over in Bangkok. Um, but you're, you know, I mean, I know having babies, you know, being a mom is really the toughest job in the world, but it's the most rewarding. But at the same time, you're a business owner, you're a realtor, you do some property management, um, marketing consultant, and you just kind of started your life coach uh, business at the same time. So wearing a lot of different hats, which is really, I really like to do. <laughs> yeah, so I actually moved to Guam uh, nine years ago. Oh. And so it's been a while. And in the beginning, I didn't know, like you said, I didn't know where I wanted to go, which kind of career I wanted to take. So I did dabble in a lot of things. I did substitute teaching. I did marketing positions. And then eventually, after I had my first child, which was my daughter, five years ago, I realized that I needed flexibility in my life and I needed to control my own time. And that was the main reason I started Scarlet Rose. And at that time, you know, like you said, I did not have the confidence. I always felt like because I wasn't from the island, it would be hard for me to connect with people and I didn't have the, I didn't have the acquaintances or the friendships or even the connections that I needed to start a business. So that was a big hurdle. I had to really, in my own mind, I had to really cross that hurdle and say, you know, people do this all the time with strangers. So you just have to do it. You have to take the first step. 
And that's why I started Scarlet Rose. It was a very, very small investment just to see if I was able to able to do something. And so my daughter was six months old and I would spend my whole day, you know, watching her. And then when my husband would come home, he would help. And then I would actually start working on the business from like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. That was my prime time. I'd be like tagging and taking pictures and doing all my work at that time. And then then go to bed from 2 to like 8 a.m. And then again, you know, with my daughter all day. And what was Scarlet Rose? Go ahead. And the business Scarlet Rose was what? Yes. What did you sell? I'm sorry? Oh, it's a jewelry business. And so it was a... I used to bring in jewelry from Thailand and I used to sell it and I felt it was great because at that time there wasn't too many places where you could buy uh, what do you call it? custom custom jewelry and so it was great because I used to go to my customers wherever they were I would go to offices or I would go to their houses and I would bring my service with me and I would bring my story with me basically sometimes i would bring my daughter with me so um i was really um you know just wing it and try and see whatever works i didn't have too many plans i didn't i didn't limit myself too much whenever i was presented with an opportunity i was like okay and then we'll see how it goes so my first exhibition or like trade fair was actually at jeff's pirate cove and it was so crazy because a lot of my my pieces hadn't come in yet. They were stuck in in transit. So I had a fair with not too many pieces. So that was a big learning lesson. But I knew that if I didn't do it then, I would not have started. So I just wanted to just start and we'll figure it out on the way. So I started my second business in 2017. It's called Quest Pack. It's a waterproof dry bag. And it's the ones that you see that you can roll up and take into the water and you know your stuff will be safe. And we, at that time, there was only one other kind of bag like that. And they had released, I think, just a month before we were getting ours in the market. So it was around the same time. So that means that there was a need for this product. And, but ours had the, you know, half a day design. It was more island theme and then the Guam seal version. So a lot of people really took to our bags because they got to protect their items, but it would also make great souvenirs or great, um, you know, support local kind of product. And our biggest hurdle, I would say, with that product would be to get into ABC stores. We thought that it would not be as hard as it turned out to be. So that was a great, um, great test of persistence and, you know, doing whatever it takes, like focus on the, the end result and, you know, change your, change your path to get there, but don't change the goal. So that was something that I really, um, worked hard on I changed a lot of the the product before I got into the store just so that I I, that was what I knew I wanted to do I wanted to sell an ABC store so I would do whatever it took and by the end of the year we were an ABC store which was quite a big accomplishment for us because that was a whole new territory and it was just going on gut instinct and we'll just see how it goes kind of business (laughs) yeah so we we looked into bringing another product in and uh, it hasn't taken off yet, which is also another part of you know the business world. It doesn't mean that every product you think is a good idea would work, even though everyone says it's a good idea. But then it was the beginning of this year and then um, COVID happened. So I kind of took it as a blessing that it didn't work because I would have a lot of inventory on hand and the world would be changing. So I also take like every rejection as a as a blessing actually so that's something that you have to also deal with it was quite hard for me to deal with that in the beginning like i couldn't understand why why i wasn't able to launch this as well as i did the bags but once covid hit i realized okay this is why so it was not meant to be and it was better i was better off this way so maybe later on in the year, once or next year, when everything kind of settles down, we'll really look into it or see if we can make any tweaks and stuff. But for now, I'm really grateful that I didn't start it. Yeah. And I'm starting my third business now, which is the life coaching. And that's, I think, my real passion. That's where 
it makes me so happy to to help people figure out what they want to achieve in their life and helping them follow through with their goals and seeing them you know getting those messages in the end saying like if it wasn't for you I wouldn't have been able to do this so those are really rewarding and I think that's what I that really makes my day and it makes me really happy to be able to help people What's been your biggest challenge so far I think patience is number 1 because you know I'm I'm in that generation where I need instant gratification but also I need to learn how to have some patience so that is a really big lesson and also um just because you're excited about a product doesn't mean everyone else knows about your product you have to spend a lot of time educating people constantly you have to be okay with talking about yourself it's not bragging about yourself but it's informing people and it's informing them because if you don't talk about it they're not going to go and research your product so i had to really overcome that so well, i don't want to you know i'm kind of shy i don't want to ask for the sale i i don't want to do that i have to be i had to learn a lot of confidence in myself so now that i'm certified that as a life coach that had really given me a lot of confidence because now i know that what i say is actually true and it makes sense and it has been tested before and i'm certified to say that i know what i'm talking about so it's given me confidence and that was something that i had to learn and also the patience and also being okay with this is not ready for the coaching now that's not on me it's just they need to wait for their right time so again patience and not holding it too personally with the three big I think two big things that I've taken away from the last few years. So yeah, I've known I I've, I've known you and in fact you were one of our speakers um when we did Unleash Your Future um when we had Larry Farrell Farrell on Island talking about uh, the entrepreneurial attitude. And so she you shared some of your story back then, but it's true it's it's you know we want to do something I mean part of when you choose a product you have to have why you're doing it why that why that product makes sense you know where does it touch all you guys i mean it's just had it, it it isn't just about this cool product it's if it doesn't resonate with you it's not going to resonate with anybody else it's like oh yeah well everybody likes candy so let's sell candy it's you know what about candy and where what market are you going after and you know you got to get that niche and all those those other good things Um but you also did a workshop with me on confidence once you got your confidence and uh so I know you got that confidence down and um you know like we work together all the time um we got certified by the uh same um company as far as with coaching um and I said you know that's one of the things that you said you wanted to do and I said well here go get this certification you did and we're going to rock it and we're going to be able to do some work together. So that's the other thing you can do is you can collaborate other people. So even with your companies itself, you know, and that's when I was talking to Karen earlier as far as that collaboration, you know, you're saying working on people outside, um again, it's a matter of collaborating. Whatever you come up with, you may find somebody else who needs that product, which would be really cool um or something that you can do with them. So my Thing would be who has a question or I would say I would say Karen what kind of questions do you have from Rasby Um so do you have employees in your um company No <laughs> it's just me and my husband and so now we we have someone that helps us when we're off island to make orders so because of covid we had to i created a website but now we started selling on the website that's the only way we thought that we could pivot and sell during this time so we have someone that makes the deliveries like d- drops it off to the post office for us and but that's about it we don't i do everything from the you know ordering inventory to managing it to packaging everything myself to delivering to everything myself yeah so my my husband helps with the financing part of it and also so you were saying that um like you were working from 10 to 2 do you yeah. still and that was with one company so how is how do you balance all three companies at once you still so, um, long hours late at night now no because my daughter is older she goes oh. to school so i am available during her school hours 
but um, she I have taken her to make deliveries when I need to. She's very helpful. She helps me with my packaging. And I want to show her that, you know, this is life. And if you want to start something, you've got to... I want her to be used to doing the work. And she's very helpful. She enjoys working with me. So with the jewelry business, now I've taken a very big step back. I just have it all displayed at halls and meetings. And I don't do much work for it. I don't even do marketing or anything for it. It's just there. And if someone walks in the store, they see it, they buy something, then I'm told about it. But I honestly have taken a very big step back because I wanted to focus a lot of my attention on the bags. So during the day, I just drive around, I drop her off to school, and then I drive around to all the different stores and see what they need. So the thing about Guam is a lot of the stores, they don't call you for replenishing the products. You have to go and check yourself. And that was a big um, time commitment that you take. But that was my love for the business. So that's what I would do. And then I would go, and even if sometimes they weren't ready for an order, I would kind of push it because I don't want to come back so I wanted them to always be fully stocked and I would I would rearrange the display for them if it wasn't looking nice I would just be like hey you want me to help you with your merchandising and then I would because you know when you love your product and when you have a heart in it it matters to you how people see it and when I do a business I put a lot of my heart and soul into everything if I don't love it I won't do it that's where I've actually um stop doing real estate and I'm actually giving up my license within this year because I didn't have a love for it I did it for other reasons at the time so um, when I love something I will put in all the hours it takes I actually got certified when I was pregnant during COVID homeschooling my daughter at the same time but I just loved it so much that it didn't matter the commitment didn't matter and I wanted to get it done before I gave birth so I, I gave myself a deadline Time constraints, they're important. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, you know, I mean, one of the things about like the dry bags, I think a lot of people have seen the dry bags before. Um, I just yeah. happen to have one. I don't think it's yours. <gasps> you should not be telling me that. I know, you're <laughs> in trouble now, Meg. <laughs> I don't show it, but you know, it's one of these. Okay. And like uh -huh. you said, logo, and then you were able to sell it to companies. Um, yeah and let them put their own logos on it. And you know, yes. one thing that when you're doing that, because if you can go out and, oops, okay, it was a Matson. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, but um, you know, if you, if you choose a product to put a label on and market it yourself or whatever, the one thing, I mean, tell them what happened with uh, ABC. So ABC was yeah, so here. So that was a lesson I had learned and I don't, I mean, if I was them, I'd probably do the same thing. You know, it was a good product. It was easy to bring in. The, there was a need for it and it wasn't hard to make your own, which is something I've learned. And that's something that I take into consideration now whenever I think of a new product. Can anyone else take this idea? Is it easy to copy? You know, you need to have control over your product or your niche needs to be not so small where you're so limited. Like right now, because our products say Guam on it, I can't sell it to anybody else. So right. I have to wait for, you know, Guam tourists to want to buy it. So what we used to do is when um, business got a little bit slow, we actually just had a canopy up at Chamorro Village and we would sell over there. And we would interact with the customers one-on-one. -on -one. We wouldn't go through the retailers because um, I feel like you need to do what it takes, right? And a lot of the stores were bringing in their own bags because they saw that it was selling off the shelves. And that's just part of business. You can't hold a grudge with anyone for thinking like a business person because I would probably do the same thing. So that was a big lesson learned. So now every time I think of a new product, I always have to think, do I want to go through that? Am I able to own the product without anyone else copying it easily? Um, if someone does copy it, am I okay with that? What would I do with my inventory? There's a lot more thought process that comes in, but it only comes in with time. I mean, I wouldn't have assumed this would have happened when I started off. So it was a lesson learned, yeah. But I'm, I'm grateful that I got that lesson so that I don't jump into the next big thing because I'm very fast into jumping in with new ideas. So this was a way of 
helping me think through what to do next. Yeah. Razmeet is, you know, your 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 passion and your ability to just, you know, go for it. I really, I really um, admire you for that. Like you said, you know, when you moved here, you didn't have the famous network, and you know, you weren't, you know, you weren't from here. So for you to just, I I, I pick up a lot of you doing things outside of your comfort zone, and that's a huge lesson for entrepreneurs, especially today because you 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 won't know until you ask right and the fact that you were going door to door i mean i i would have never um imagined that you would you know you have that passion you know and that 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 gusto and and you know i'm sure you you received a lot of no's but it's those yeses the quality yeses that really make the difference so um thank you for sharing your story and you said a lot of um lessons in between like having patience i for one have zero patience patience isn't even on my vocabulary <laughs> and yeah. you hit it on the nose about how everything nowadays has to be instant instantaneous right you really yeah. um i really appreciate you um coming on our podcast and you you really put out some really good advice and lessons key lessons so congratulations and congratulations on the baby yay thank you I love thank you yeah we're probably so exciting you said that really uh really um clicked in my brain is that you said you know coming from the client's point of view your customer point of view so like you said we you know a lot of times we think oh this would be a great idea you know i'm really into such and such and everyone should like it because i love it and then you go to sell it and it's like you, nobody does love it now if i would have started in saying i'm selling this product because of this reason this reason reason and this reason and people understand that reason and they you know and then that's where you find that niche market so that's for the yeah. we try to think we're going to sell it to everybody and it really yeah. is about bringing it the smaller especially when you're starting the better because even if you say this is for you know these bags are for people you know for the beach whatever also you have to start finding out oh these are you know these can be used for hikers these can be used for you know cyclers these can be used for um you know boaters you know i mean there's all sorts of yeah. other water activities that this can be used on and it doesn't have to be the same thing with the gifts because you put a company logo on it and all of a sudden wow now it could be a gift from a company at christmas time to their clients so i mean one product can always expand and that's one of the things you want to look at instead of having three or four products take one product and recycle it over and over again to different um different customers so how i've pivoted the product is now because i am not an outdoor enthusiast it's hard for me to show my love for the product for me the product makes sense and i use it when i go to the beach but i don't go out that much so how i started um showing the use of the bag is when customers do tag us they go out and buy the bag on their own and then they tag us in their posts or their pictures i contact them and i let their passion in the outdoor world show how they use the bag so i've changed the way i've marketed the product now and i'm showing the love for the outdoors and hey here's a little bag that will help you your love for the outdoors be even better yeah, and the that's the way i'm trying to push the bag so the bag is not the focus anymore it's the experiences you're getting from going outdoors and one less thing to worry about and that was something i had learned i want to say within this year so i have I have contacted um a few of the people that have bought it and now they help me post pictures and because they're the way they're the ones using it they could describe better why they went to buy the bag in the first place and then the benefits that they get out of it so it it's explaining to other people like them and then it also it opens up their community to us pack So um someone is in the military right now and they have their own community of people that go on adventure hikes and stuff and she's able to introduce the product to her group of people. So that was a a, a pivot I kind of took in the marketing this year. Nice. 
Yeah, I really yeah. like uh, your the latest commercial, the one that was on your website of um, yeah. the people paddle boarding down the Laddie River, uh, whatever yeah. the river is, but going down that river um, yeah. and Telefofo Bay, and they're they have the they're on paddle boards with their the quest packs, you know, on them. Yeah, I just think that's yes. like I said, that's a really great way to market. Let your let your customers, let your raving fans do the marketing yes. for you. Yeah, because they could explain the benefits better than you because they're the ones using it more than you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So we'll wrap it up then for today and we'll see you all next week on our podcast, YouTube. Adios. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. for joining us. Yeah.